Good evening. Uh, welcome to this uh, workshop on AI Masterclass using MATLAB. I warmly welcome you to this event. Thanks for coming and thank you for your participation. Uh, before we go into the session, uh, first I will uh, give you a short introduction about Pantech and about me. Uh, Pantech, uh, Pantech was started in the year 2004. Uh, we are basically into manufacturing of embedded uh, motherboards like uh, we manufacture microcontroller boards, uh, DSP boards and FPGA boards. And we also manufacture electronics and electrical lab equipments uh, like uh, fuel cell trainer kits and uh, renewable energy trainer kit and uh, the communication trainer kits and the AI development boards and sensors like EEG headset and, uh, 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 and those things we manufacture. And if you want to uh, know more about our products and services, you just log on to our website, uh, pantechsolutions.net. Uh, you could get an idea of about about, about uh, like what we manufacture and what are the services which we provide. About me, uh, my name is Jeevarajan. I completed my uh, BE in the year 2002 from uh, Government College of Engineering Burgur and my Masters in the year 2004 uh, from College of Engineering Kindi. I'm basically from Applied Electronics and uh, my primary expertise is on embedded electronics. Like I worked on various microcontrollers and DSPs and FPGAs. And uh, on various, I have worked on various image processing algorithms like uh, compression, uh, segmentation, and denoising, and uh, deep learning and machine learning applications, like uh, around 300 to 400 applications. So from 2004 to 2020, like it's almost around 16 years of experience on uh, uh, from schematic design and board design, PCB layout, and the board complete uh, board bring up process. So I take care of the research and development team in Pantac and. Uh, uh, if you want to connect me on LinkedIn, I have provided my LinkedIn uh, link in the description box. You could send me a connection request. I am happy to connect and happy to help. So this uh, uh, workshop is about sharing my knowledge. So I'm sure that you will have a great learning on this 15 days. I once again welcome you to this workshop. And uh, what you will learn on this 15 days, right? So uh, uh, we are going to get connect for 15 days. So on day one, uh, it's it's about basics of MATLAB, and uh, like we'll be covering up the introduction to artificial intelligence, and we'll be covering up the basics of MATLAB. And day two is on image processing, uh, on basics of image processing. Like we'll be covering up how to read images and how to extract edges, edge information, and how to do morphological operations. And if you have attended the previous program, like the MATLAB masterclass series or a five-day workshop series on image processing. The first four days is about the basic and we, are, we have uh, uh, like we have repeated the same thing uh, because to give you uh, the basics uh, to make your fundamentals strong and uh, and if you are new to the session like no need of any pre request you could just follow from day 1 to day 15 so you will be introduced to MATLAB and you will be, will be covering up from basics of image processing and uh, computer vision video processing uh, definitely after going through this 15 days uh, you will be definitely a uh, master in artificial intelligence. Like uh, we will give you the overview of super, what, what supervised learning and about what is unsupervised learning and what is reinforcement learning and how to develop the programs. Okay, So every program will be explained line by line. Explanation will be there. And uh, so we we'll make use of this event. So we will be covering up things which is not covered up in your curriculum. Okay? So day one to day four is about basics of image processing, computer vision and video processing. Computer vision like we will be covering up how to use the computer vision toolbox from MATLAB and applications like optical character recognition and uh, like the face recognition, face detection and uh, uh, barcode recognition kind of thing and uh, that will be covered up in computer vision. In video processing, we will be covering up how to acquire images from a camera and from mobile phone and how to do uh, your own application, uh, video processing applications. And day five, uh, how to create a simple neural network uh, by using pattern recognition toolbox. And uh, uh, we'll be going through application called cancer detection and digit classification so that you could develop your own uh, feed forward uh, neural network or a feedback neural network. So that we'll be covering up on day five. Day six, uh, we will be covering up the future extraction because future extraction is a key thing on uh, in machine learning uh, because in machine learning you have to do the future extraction process manually so here we will be covering up different techniques of future extraction uh, 
like GLCM features, how to extract GLCM features and uh, HOG features or, or, or uh, serve features. Uh, that we will be covering up in day 6. Day 7, how to write your own uh, algorithm on machine learning. Like uh, we will be covering up SVM, support vector machines for the application uh, for called digital digit classification right so uh, we will be cover we will be also uh, uh, covering like we will also covering the classification learner app from uh, matlab uh, where you could implement different svm algorithms and you could deploy the code okay so those things will be covering up on day 7 day 8 we will be covering up knn how to write the knn algorithm for gesture classification okay on day 9 we will be developing a simple deep learning application from scratch how to define the cnn layers and uh, how to set the training parameters how to create a data store image data store and how to split the label training labels and the validation label and the testing labels and how to evaluate the cnn algorithm that we will be covering up on day nine how to create a simple uh, deep learning application from scratch on day 10 uh, we will be covering up supervised learning as well as the transfer learning like how to uh, imp how to apply transfer learning on the pre-trained uh, deep learning neural networks like AlexNet uh, or DenseNet that we will be covering up on uh, day 10 supervised learning where you will be giving both data uh, uh, as well as the label okay so uh, the application will be food classification on day 11 we will be covering up unsupervised learning so uh, in this uh, we will be covering up an example called image anomaly detection which is used for fault detection uh, in industries uh, on day 12 is we will be covering up the regional CNN like uh, the previous two like the supervised learning and unsupervised learning will give you only the labels it won't give you the bounding box whereas the regional CNN will give you the bounding box like phase detection or fire detection where if you need wherever, wherever you need a bounding box for like the animal detection so those kind of thing uh, can be implemented by using a regional CNN so we'll be covering up how to design a simple a regional CNN using MATLAB. Okay, on day 13 we will be covering up reinforcement learning using MATLAB. On day 13, day 14 uh, will be of semantic segmentation using deep learning, which is used for self-driving cars kind of application. Uh, so that we will be covering up on day 14 and day 15. How to deploy an AI algorithm on a Jetson Nano? Like Jetson Nano is an embedded hardware. Like it's just like a Raspberry Pi processor which has more computing speed than raspberry pi processor like uh, where you could deploy an ai algorithm code uh, on jetson nano using matlab that we will be covering here the application will be real-time foot recognition here we will be connecting a camera to a jetson nano processor and the code is developed on matlab and the uh, finally the code is downloaded to the jetson nano using a coder like a gpu coder then the algorithm will be on the jetson nano it will capture the frames from the camera and it will do a real-time foot recognition so that is on day 15 okay so definitely from day 1 to day 15 uh, we assure you that you will be having a great learning uh, you just uh, go through each and every videos and these videos will be available only for three days on youtube after that we will make it as a private and uh, so you just uh, go through the videos uh, and you practice okay only practice will make you better so this uh, from day 1 to day 15 we have make it as a structured content so you could start from basics even though if you don't have prior knowledge on matlab no need to worry like uh, you could uh, you could start from day 1 to day 15 and you could uh, you could definitely you could be a master okay there's a uh, Announcement like uh, the attendance and feedback link will be available at 8.30 p.m. So no need to hurry like uh, uh, you could it, it will be extended for uh, one more hour after the event. So you could fill up the attendance later and uh, uh, if you have any questions like we have a Google form in the description box. Uh, you could fill up the Google form like with your name and your email and your for WhatsApp number and and your question right the answers will be sent through email or through whatsapp via podcast or through email you will get an email so which we will be sending the answers uh, on daily basis so you will get a reply on the same day and uh, uh, so you could fill up the form over here which we have not introduced in the previous sessions 
this is the first time you are doing this and this attendance uh, you have to maintain for 13 days okay you have minimum attendance you have to you have you should have a minimum attendance of 13 days to get a free e certificate which can be downloaded from our website uh, after uh, after a week of this of, of the event okay. so i would like to give a short disclaimer like uh, pantech is not associated with matlab or mathworks if you want to download the trail version we have provided the link in the description box you could download the trail version from the mathox website it is available for free and it's a 30 days uh time like the time is around 30 days like or uh, you could uh you have to install the toolbox so i'll be providing the list of toolbox which is required for this event so you have to install all those toolbox to uh, practice those experiments okay so coming to introduction about matlab like uh, MATLAB was uh, founded in the year 1984 like uh, by Cleve Moller. Uh, basically, it was an extension of his thesis, PhD thesis. And uh, it's from a company called MathWorks. And he basically like introduced as a simulation tool. Later that it was, then it was like, it was yeah, the tool get uh, covered. It, it, was, it was a mathematical tool. Like uh, it covers, it could do a mathematical processing uh it could uh it is used for uh simulating the algorithms and and you can also design and develop your own algorithms where matlab will have multiple toolboxes uh the pre-written source codes for the algorithms where you could write uh where you could call those algorithms from the libraries and you could uh you could also deploy it on the hardware like matlab also supports uh, uh graphical programming as well as the uh, code it also provides the gpu coder and uh, the necessary uh, coders for the embedded hardware. Like if you want the code for Arduino, uh, you could convert that code for Arduino and you could download the MATLAB uh, code on MATLAB. You could download the MATLAB codes on Arduino processor, uh, Arduino microcontroller, Arduino like uh, the uh, from uh, uh, for the um, for any kind of microcontrollers like a TA microcontrollers for um, for Atmel microcontrollers. Uh, and, or for DSP processors from like Texas Instruments or for FPGAs, they have provided the necessary coders where you could generate the code, uh, C code or, or the HDL files. If it is a FPGA, you could also generate the HDL codes from MATLAB and you could download. Like uh, for uh, Jetson Nano, you, you could generate the CUDA codes. They have a GPU coder where it generates the CUDA code. MATLAB code will generate the CUDA codes, which can be directly deployed on the uh embedded processor it also supports graphical programming like uh, no need to write the code on matlab language matlab uh, has its own language uh, 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 so it's 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 kind of model kind of thing where you have a block sets and you just drag and drop this block sets connect those block sets and uh, you could generate the code you could generate the code and you could generate the, you could simulate the algorithm so that's an advantage so it is a simulation tool uh, as well as uh, and you could uh, you could reduce the design time and uh, as uh, like the design the, the tool has been designed in that way like uh, like it won't show error for simple things like even if you have if you if you don't have a semicolon this tool the tool uh, the the code still runs uh, whereas in c language or uh VHL, like it shows the syntax error whereas this tool is uh, like it's meant for meant to reduce the design time okay. so coming to AI, like uh, AI is artificial intelligence it's like to imitate the humans like uh, and to take decisions better than humans okay so to for uh, to define AI, i have a small video for four minutes it i'm i'll just play this video with uh, it has some graphics involved and uh, you just listen to this video for four minutes so it will give you a overview of AI. Okay. I'm playing this video. Artificial intelligence for people in a hurry. The easiest way to think about artificial intelligence is in the context of a human. After all, humans are the most intelligent creatures we know of. AI is a broad branch of computer science. The goal of AI is to create systems that can function intelligently and independently. Humans can speak and listen to communicate through language. This is the field of speech recognition. 
Much of speech recognition is statistically based, hence it's called statistical learning. Humans can write and read text in a language. This is the field of NLP or natural language processing. Humans can see with their eyes and process what they see. This is the field of computer vision. Computer vision falls under the symbolic way for computers to process information. Recently, there's been another way, which I'll come to later. Humans recognize the scene around them through their eyes, which create images of that world. This field of image processing, which even though is not directly related to AI, is required for computer vision. Humans can understand their environment and move around fluidly. This is the field of robotics. Humans have the ability to see patterns, such as grouping of like objects. This is the field of pattern recognition. Machines are even better at pattern recognition because they can use more data and dimensions of data. This is the field of machine learning. Now let's talk about the human brain. The human brain is a network of neurons and we use these to learn things. If we can replicate the structure and the function of the human brain, we might be able to get cognitive capabilities in machines. This is the field of neural networks. If these networks are more complex and deeper, and we use those to learn complex things, that is the field of deep learning. There are different types of deep learning in machines, which are essentially different techniques to replicate what the human brain does. If we get the network to scan images from left to right, top to bottom, it's a convolution neural network. A CNN is used to recognize objects in a scene. This is how computer vision fits in and object recognition is accomplished through AI. Humans can remember the past, like what you had for dinner last night. Well, at least most of you. We can get a neural network to remember a limited past. This is a recurrent neural network. As you see, there are two ways AI works. One is symbolic based and another is data based. For the database side called machine learning, we need to feed the machine lots of data before it can learn. For example, if you had lots of data for sales versus advertising spend, you can plot that data to see some kind of a pattern. If the machine can learn this pattern, then it can make predictions based on what it has learned. While one or two or even three dimensions is easy for humans to understand and learn, Machines can learn in many more dimensions, like even hundred or thousands. That's why machines can look at lots of high dimensional data and determine patterns. Once it learns these patterns, it can make predictions that humans can't even come close to. We can use all these machine learning techniques to do one of two things, classification or prediction. As an example, when you use some information about customers to assign new customers to a group like young adults, then you are classifying that customer. If you use data to predict if they're likely to defect to a competitor, then you're making a prediction. There's another way to think about learning algorithms used for AI. If you train an algorithm with data that also contains the answer, then it's called supervised learning. For example, when you train a machine to recognize your friends by name, you'll need to identify them for the computer. If you train an algorithm with data where you want the machine to figure out the patterns, then it's unsupervised learning. For example, you might want to feed the data about celestial objects in the universe and expect the machine to come up with patterns in that data by itself. If you give any algorithm a goal and expect the machine through trial and error to achieve that goal, then it's called reinforcement learning. A robot's attempt to climb over the wall until it succeeds is an example of that. So what MATLAB can do for you? Like uh, these are the toolbox uh, which you require to install. Like, uh, 
you need a neural network toolbox and fuzzy logic toolbox uh, it's not required actually so statistics toolbox computer vision machine learning toolbox deep learning toolbox and reinforcement learning toolbox and robotic system toolbox and image processing toolbox audio toolbox and text analytic toolbox so these are the toolbox which you need and uh, text analytics we are not going to cover up on this 15 days uh, 15 days on um, the fuzzy logic toolbox is also not required so you could uh, uh, you could eliminate this uh, text analytics and audio toolbox and the fuzzy logic toolbox okay so we are going to cover up on image and video or uh, uh, like artificial intelligence uh, for image and video so uh, the rest of the toolbox like in the neural network machine learning deep learning and the reinforcement learning robotic systems uh, image processing toolbox you in you need those toolbox okay uh, you can type uh, we are in the command window so you will get a list of toolbox which is installed once once you if, if it is not there this toolbox is not there in that window then you have to install those uh, toolboxes okay so let's go uh, go with uh, practical session scripts and light scripts okay i'm opening matlab now so i'm opening matlab So the first thing uh, you will get once you open the MATLAB, you will get a window in this in this format. Like you will have a command window where you could type a single line of commands. Okay. The first thing you have to do is to change the path. Okay. I have a folder called day one on my desktop. I just copy the path okay, and I am going to paste it on the command window. You have to do this because matlab by default matlab will look the files only on this folder okay if it is not there then it will show error you have to place this uh, all the programs and the, all the files on the folder or you it, it should be in the root folder okay so it will search on the current path else it will search on the root path so the first thing is to change the path you could either paste the path here or you just go to the command window type cd is change directory single quote and paste the path okay so if you type pwd it's so it will display you the current working directory here okay public working directory so it will display the current working folder so ls is for list files it will list the files which is inside the folder so command window this window is called command window where you could type single line of commands and this is the current folder so there is no files inside this folder so it is empty so this details will give you the uh, information about the folder like uh, files which is inside the folder okay it may be a m file or it may be an image it will give you the details and the right hand side is a workspace whatever the uh, variable you create on the program or in the command window it will be created in the workspace to clear the workspace you could use a command called clear which will clear the workspace okay clc is for clear screen clc is for clear screen clear is for variable clear and close all is to close all the figures which was opened by the previous program okay. this and cd for change directory cd single quotes you could change the directory here and ls for list files and pwd for to display the current working directory okay public working directory and this is called command history whatever the commands you type in the command window will be stored in the command history okay so to create a program uh, like you could create an m file uh, you could, by clicking the new script or by just typing edit in the command window so once you type edit in the command window it will open the editor window this is the editor window where you could type the program and you could save the program and you could run the program okay so just i'm going to declare a variable clc clear and close on i'm going to declare uh, okay i'm going to declare a variable a equal to five and b equal to 6 just i'm declaring so i'm doing a simple addition c equal to a plus b and disp is the command which is used to display in the command window okay save the program save the program it lasts for a file name 
I'm going to save in the name of ex1.m. It's example1.m. Okay. Once you save the program, you, you, you got the file name with .m extension. Okay. And this is the run icon. Like you could run, hit the run button to run the program. Okay. Once you hit the run button, the output will be displayed in the command window. Okay. This is the script. If you want live script, you just click new and click live script here. I'm going to copy the same program to the live script. I'm going to copy the same program to the live script. The one uh, advantage of live script is it can also have the text information. Like you just click the text here. Okay. Text here. And you could create a title. Okay. This is a live script. And it could also give the heading, the heading one. And if you want, you could also include the equations. This tool will be useful for uh, for the educators. So it could also include the equation. Okay. If you want image also, you could also include the image. Cheers. Okay. And save the program. EX2. The extension will be .mlx format. MATLAB live script. Okay. And you could run the program. Go for the editor, live editor. And run the program so the output will be displayed on the right hand side okay. the output is displayed on the right hand side if you want to display inline you just click the option here output inline okay click the option and run the program so the output is displayed on the inline okay you also have option to hide the code and you could save the program as a pdf file if you want to export to pdf Okay, I am exporting this program as PDF. So a PDF file is created. Okay. This is the program. This is the live script heading and the program and the output. Okay. So this is this is used for educators uh, like where you could type the program and you could uh, also provide the explanations about the program. And uh, it's like the Jupyter notebook. Whereas in a script, you could have only the comment lines as well as the code. You cannot have the text information or the image information on the code. So that's the difference between a script and the live script. Okay. So coming to arrays, I'm going to declare a simple array like a equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. This is a simple array. If you want to index the array like b equal to a of 3 will give you the value okay so i'm going to declare this is 13 12 14 okay then so check for who's it's an array of size five elements okay if you want to index an array like b equal to a of three will give you the value from three you could also change the value by a of 3 equal to 25. Okay. So the value has been changed here. So if I if you could also like find the maximum value from array, like b equal to max of a will give you the maximum value from the array. Okay. And uh, c equal to min of a will give you the minimum value from the array. And if you want to get the length, length of a so this will give you the length of the array okay so i have declared an uh, array okay i'm just copying this program from command history and creating a script here okay. 
save it as example 3 it's for array okay. i have declared an array here okay in this program i have declared an array you could index the value of the array by giving the pointers and whose is used to display like what is the size you could display the size and bytes and class of the array okay you could also find the maximum value like max stands for maximum value of an array min will give you the minimum value of the array and length will give you the length of the array so if you want uh, like uh, the multiplication mat this is the array multiplication so every value of the array has been multiplied by the value 2 so if you check the value of b here okay so it's multiplied by 2 and if you want the division okay so as the value has been divided by like 2 A has been divided by 2, 5, 6. Okay. So, array multiplication and array division matrix is also the same thing. Like, you could declare here like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So, this will be a uh, matrix. If you want to index the particular value of the matrix b equal to a of 2 comma 2 will give you the particular value of the matrix b okay as like uh, array like you could use max and max of a will give you the maximum value of an array it means when you give the max for one time okay it will get the maximum value in the row and next max is to get the maximum value on the column side okay max of max of a will give you the maximum value from a matrix if you want similarly if you want the minimum value just give min of min of a so will that will give this will give you the minimum value of the matrix so this is a for matrix multiplication a into 2 okay same thing a dot stack of 2 will give you the matrix multiplication division is also same thing so i'm going to divide this okay this is matrix division so we have uh, gone through an array so you could also create like a equal to 1 to 10 this will create from a to 1 to 10 so so far we have covered up arrays and matrix in arrays we have covered up how to create an array and how to create a matrix and how to find the minimum and maximum value of an array and a matrix and uh, how to uh, like uh, do an array multiplication so matlab uh, and array division and matrix addition and matrix uh, multiplication and matrix division and uh, mat uh, matlab will support all operators like the mathematical operators like addition uh, division multiplication and uh, all operators it will support the all kind of operators which was supported in c language okay. and the next example is uh, loops loops and functions in this section like uh, we will be covering up for loop if loop while loop switch case and function and live function first uh, we will cover up if loop a simple if loop okay i'm going to take an input from the command window so input is the command which is used to get the input from the command window enter the number CLC and clear for variable clear. Okay, I'm just save the program as example four and just type if a greater than five. Just display a is greater 
than five. Okay. Else, if a equal to five, otherwise you just type first. Else we'll go with the else and this a is smaller. Okay. Save the program. Run the program. I just hit the run button here. Okay. It asks for a number, so I seven a is greater than five. So you could stop by clicking the by clicking on the number here. So this is called breakpoint. Breakpoint is used to stop the execution of the program. Okay, I run the hit the run button and I just enter the number 10. So you could see the value of a. The value of a is 10 because the program will stop at the breakpoint and you could give a step in function like step function to go step by step so it will step it will display a is greater than 5 and then it comes out of the program okay so breakpoint is used to stop the execute of the execution of the program you could also remove breakpoints by like you just go for clear all on the top so that will remove the breakpoints if you want to uh, a breakpoint just click do a left click on this icon on this icon so you, you click it again it will remove the breakpoint okay so breakpoint is used to stop the execution of the program else if else if a equal to 5 the same program you could also use for else if this a is 5 else display is small so run the program and i give five now so it's displaying a is five this is a simple example for if loop i will repeat the program okay. a equal to input is to get the input from the command window you could also directly give here like you could directly give here like a equal to 10 so the output will be displayed on the command window okay a equal to five So if you want to get the input from the command window, then you have to give a equal to input enter the number. If a greater than 5, then this set of commands will execute. Else if a equal to 5, disp a is 5, this will execute. Else disp a is smaller, this will execute. Okay. This is a simple example for if loop. This basic coding, this basic will be required for while writing the program. So the basic if loop, for loop, while loop and switch case are uh, mandatory. Okay. So the next program is on for loop. So I'm going to copy like the same thing, a equal to input, enter the number. Okay. And just type for i equal to 1 to 10. So this will increment for 10 times a equal to a plus 1 and disp of a. Save the program as example 5. Run the program. So I am going to enter 10. So the output will be 20. So let us check what is happening inside the program. I keep a breakpoint at line number 4 and click run the button and click the run button. Now I am giving 10. Okay. So the value of A is 10. So I am giving step. So and this is incremented 10 times. So if you check the value of 5, the value of 5 is 5 now and it is getting incremented for 10 times. Okay, and it is coming out of the loop. So if you check the value, the value of a is 20. Okay. So if we give a equal to 5, okay. Comment the score. Right click comment. This is to comment the program. Save the program. So dbqt is used to come out of the debug mode. dbqt is used to come out of the debug mode. Okay, this this is the debug mode. If you if you have a green color icon on the code, then the, it is in debug mode actually. So if you want to come out of the debug mode, you just type dbqt in the command window. That will come out of the debug mode. And a equal to 5, 
or i equal to 1 to 10 so this will uh, if you can just click like this will incremental for 10 times okay and it will come so you could also give the increment value here so if you give 2 so it will take the value from i equal to 1 to okay, 4 6 like that so it will increment only for 5 times so if you check here a equal to 5 and a the value of a is it is incremented only for 5 times so the 10 okay you could also give uh, multiple for loops for i equal to 1 and for j equal to 1 to 10 end so what happens is this will execute 400 times so the output will be 105 okay so this once is if you want to see the visual like i'm giving i'm clicking quit debugging here click the run button okay step so this will run for 10 times and it will come out of the loop again okay so i'm giving continue now so the output is 105 this is a simple example for for loop so the next is uh, so far we have caught up if loop and a for loop the next example is while loop so i'm creating a program a equal to 5 while a less than 100 so a equal to a plus 5 okay end disp of a so save the program example 6 run the program keep a breakpoint here okay breakpoint is used to stop the execution of the program so it is used to by keeping breakpoint you could analyze what is happening and what are the value of the variables right so a equal to 5 and i am going to clip a breakpoint at 9 so that you could once i give continue it will stop on the on line number 9 so if you check a so once it reach 100 like it, it comes out of the value okay so if you if you want to give infinite loop just give while of 1 you have to give, you have to give a condition like if a equal to 100 then it, it should break break okay so this should be on the outer loop save the program and run the program so if you check now like when when a reaches 100 it will break the loop otherwise it will be infinite okay you just keep the breakpoint here and you could check hit the run button so if you check the value of a it will be 100 this is an example for simple while loop so so far we have covered up a simple if loop and a while and a for loop okay and a while loop the next example is switch case in for switch case you just type help switch in the command window you will get a sample code there okay just copy the code Just copy the code and paste the code like example 7 you rename this as example 7 i'm going to get this input from the command window input enter the number okay so switch method if case 1 it will display method is 1 if the case is 2 it will display method is 2 and if case is 3 it will display method is 3 otherwise unknown method okay. save the program and run the program like you include clc and clear for variable clear and run the program so you just enter the number like 2 it will tell the method is 2 and you just enter 3 it will tell the method is 3 if you enter 10 it tell unknown method okay
so this is a simple example for like uh, to run the program to okay for switch case this is a simple example for switch case if you want uh, to implement a string then like you could directly give this here as uh, it to accept string from the command window and this is this you make it as lower like this is one okay and this is two and this is three so save the program and run the program so i just type one in the command window one in the command window so it displays method is one run the program again i type two in the command window it displays method is two okay so this is a simple example for switch case for both numerical as well as for string this is for string in the previous program like if you take this one and and you remove lower is to convert that to uh, lower math like the if even if you enter a capital letter like it will convert that to a uh, smaller one okay so capital letter also for for that to convert for whatever the command like you just type help lower in the command window this will give you like ex explanation like lower to convert to lower case so uh, the next is functions how to create a function just create go for file new script function and uh, this is this will be automatically created like function is used to like wherever you have repetition repetitive tasks then you could use functions to perform okay, i'm going to add a comma b i'm going to just add a comma b i remove this program so c equal to a plus b and i convert this as c save the program while you save the program the function name and the file name should be same okay the, this is the function name the file name should be also same add.m add.m now if you check this program from the command window c equal to add of 1 comma 2 this will give you the output a equal to add of 1 comma 12 this will give you the output a equal to 13 okay similarly i'm going to i'm going to copy and i'm going to create one more function this i'm going to change this multiplication and just changing the operator here save the program file name and the function name should be same okay so save the program file name and the function name should be same now just copy like a equal to of 1 comma 2 this will give you the multiplication okay now you could write a program for a equal to 5 and b equal to 6 c equal to add of a comma b and uh, d equal to multiplication of a comma b save the program as example eight okay now keep a breakpoint here so run the program so a equal to five and b equal to six so you just click step in to go inside this program so it, it will do a uh, addition process step it will come out of the function and it will go into multiplication and it will do the multiplication and it will come out of the multiplication so c and d will have the addition and the multiplication value so this is a simple example to create functions okay how to create your own function both function and the live function are same it's like the lives function can have the text document inside whereas this function can have only the commenter lines on the program okay so so far we have caught up and if loop and uh, for loop and while loop okay and we have caught up the switch case we have caught up the switch case and we have 
create a function and multiplication like uh, create two functions and we have called this function from a main file and the next the next uh, example is on plots and subplots so i'm going to create a program like a equal to lin space of 0 comma 6 which will clear uh, which will create a linear spaced array clc for clear okay and uh, b equal to sine of a and plot a comma b this is just for plot a comma b save the program Say example 9 and run the program okay you just got the plot here you have to mention x label and y label and title so x label is just type x axis here and y label is y axis and title is the title okay and you got like the plot of a comma b you could mention the color here and you could also mention the line width okay grid on So save the program and run the program. Okay, so this is the one. And now I'm going to mention uh, C equal to cos of A, which will hold on the previous graph and it will plot the value of cos. This green and line with this. Okay. and you put the legend as sign and the cos save the program and run the program okay the sign and the cos so read on and this line width you could change x axis y axis and title okay hold on is to hold the both the graphs you could also place g text it means placing the text anywhere place anywhere in the graph okay so this is an example for example for plot and if you want to save the variable like uh, uh, you could like clear a equal to 5 you just save of a of a will will save this variable as mat file a dot mat as a mat file so even though if you clear okay you just you could load it back by typing load of a so if you check the value of a now it is fine so this is the way to save and uh, like to save the variable and to load the variable back again okay save and load save the variable name and the name you have to give the name so so far we have caught up plots subplots we will cover up tomorrow and uh, import and export file formats load and save we have caught up so that's all about the session today like if you have any uh, doubts you just fill the form which is a google form which we which is in the description box clarification which is in the description box okay uh, we'll send an email today and uh, about uh, like 30 days internship on matlab like we have uh, on aa as well as on matlab like uh, the 30 days internship on matlab uh, like we have like the basics of MATLAB, image and video processing, uh, neural networks and neurophysiology and app development and GA development and speech and audio processing. 
So on the projects like uh, we are, we have like image compression, segmentation, denoising, recognition, uh, gesture recognition, uh, augmented realities, technography, cryptography, and segmented segmentation. And uh, like the offer price is 750 rupees for uh, MATLAB. And for AI internship is also like uh, it's for 750 rupees like um, uh, for artificial intelligence using uh, MATLAB. Okay. So if you want, if you would like to avail the internship, like uh, for 30 days, like uh, you could uh, use the link in the description and uh, you could make a payment. Like the portal will be like for uh, 60 days. You will get access for 60 days and the grace period for another 60 days. Like uh, uh, you could, uh, all the recorded videos and the PPTs and the source code will be there. If you want, you could make, I will have, make use of it. And uh, so the portal is learned at Pentax Solutions You could join the 30 days internship challenge on MATLAB or AI. So you might have received an email. And uh, thank you, uh, thank you for your time, and uh, thank you for for your participation. And uh, uh, just go through the video again, and you just practice. And if you have any, uh, if you have any problems or clarification, just fill the form. Okay, we'll get back to you uh, thank you once again uh, see you in the next day like tomorrow on the next session until then bye bye thank you